ball. They've had short drives for their scores. And this one, missing connections with Tony Jones. Mickey Washington on the coverage. And Chris Fowler, it's getting a little louder down there. It is, Bob. To clarify the Texas A&M quarterback situation, trainers say that Chris Osgood will go the rest of the way. Bucky Richardson has aggravated that knee injury he had coming in. They're going to keep him out. It's a precautionary measure, so Osgood, even though he's thrown the two interceptions, will stay in there at quarterback. There's Shannon Kelly, who you saw briefly. Donovan Forbes and others. But right now, it's Murdoch in control. Metcalf, nothing there. Aaron Wallace, 23, always seems to be around the ball carrier. Also unpiling there, 83. Guess who? The other Blitz brother, John Roper. Eric Metcalf is the only player on this team, with the exception of Tony Jones, and it takes two people to make that play. Uh, a quarterback to pass it to Jones and him to catch it. Eric Metcalf is the only player that can go 90 yards with the ball. That's why they keep giving it to him. They need to find ways to get him the ball because he's the guy that will give him the big play. Wallace pursuing from behind. Ball delivered low. And it would have been a tough, tough catch for Kevin Nelson. So the Longhorns who haven't gone any great distances for their scores tonight. Starting deep in their own territory and running three downs and kicking now. This is a big punt. That was a tremendous defensive series by AM when they needed it. Rod Harris is on the Texas side of midfield. It'll be good field position for the Aggies who oh, set up for oh. the return on a monster kick to the 46. And on special teams, a big play by Texas number 47. That is Robert Sullivan. Aggies get the ball back, 5.59, third quarter, still with the lead. Someone once said... Texas has played well, but Kevin, they still haven't moved the ball the length of the field for any kind of score. No, I don't think they will either because of the advantage, the physical advantage that AM has. But their game plan is working now. Their defense is playing better. They're getting the uh, AM offense off the field without major damage, and they're able to move a little bit offensively. That's what they need to do, and that's what they need to do here late in the third quarter. Aggies have good field position at their own 45 after that tremendous kick by the Longhorns. Bobby Lilgido. But the defense will have to play well here. Osgood. Football, but it's out of bounds. It looked like he was a bit undecided about whether to keep it or make the pitch. Well, the, the ball was fumbled out of bounds. Well, we talked about that just a moment ago. The defense playing well. The offense now without Bucky Richardson. Remember, they went to the option for Bucky Richardson and because they have fine running backs what they have now is a passing quarterback who does not play all that much in running situations trying to run the option momentum swinging towards the Texas defense the deep give is to Darren Lewis in my opinion this is what Texas A&M needs to do move them out and look how the white shirts are pushing the orange shirts back. It's my opinion, if they do that for three consecutive downs, they'll have a first down. Darren Lewis will find the hole. 56, Richmond Webb, the left guard, hobbling off the field after being involved in some of that trench warfare. Bill Cavanaugh, a 6'4 junior, number 58, is the man who backs up both guards, Webb and Fontenot. So 58, middle of your screen, the man they call on here. What A&M does, better than anything else is run right. Behind Fontenot and McCall, Darren Lewis, very close. You can see the marker at the top of your screen. Did he get to it or is he a little bit short? And right at midfield, it's a tough situation for a and if he didn't make it. They can punt for field position or go. Well, I, in my opinion, this is they, they just have to go. What they do, and their physical advantage is behind Fontenot and McCall with Wilson leading. If they can't pick up a yard, and I know this is what they're thinking. They don't belong on the field. This is what they do best. Roadhouse. 
do it, tries to do it himself, and it all depends on the mark. This might be the big, biggest disadvantage for Britt Hager as a middle linebacker. He is not big enough to play straight ahead. AM loudly disputing the spot, and evidently Jackie Sherrill has been flagged by the official. Looks like that one is on the head coach. And it'll be interesting whether they assess the penalty before or after the measurement here. And they will assess it after the measurement. They didn't make it. And now they'll get 15 more. Ooh. Oh, that's been the Longhorn game plan tonight. Take an AM and mistake and turn it into a score. This one could be from the head man. Did the ball get over the line because it was spotted behind the line? Tough to tell there. Roger Pritchard, left tackle, 66, plugging things up. That's good. Well, it's really hard for us to tell, but Hager in the middle of that. What I was saying about Hager, <laughs> you can see if you think he's pumped. He's a small guy to begin with. He plays smaller than that. The best way to beat Hager is to go right at him. Texas's defense would like you not to be able to do that. With first team tackles, they can prevent it. Been tough to do tonight, but he's come through. Right flat, too short for Kevin Nelson. Murdoch comes out flinging on first down. It's a good call. They rolled him, too. They bring him outside away from the rush. There really wasn't any rush. Stan Thomas on that side has done a remarkable job. But I've noticed Murdoch here, Bobby, on his last three throws, the two down by the goal, and he's short-arming the ball a little bit, and he's throwing it low. He's got to step into it. Roper and company on second down. Draw play, Metcalf, outside, first down, inside the 20. <laughs> 20 yards for Eric Metcalf, many running backs wouldn't have had more than a couple. Champagne, Omar Soleil, Dwayne Miller, the line's doing a super job, but number two with a bad ankle. And you said it, Bobby, there's not many running backs in the country that can do that on a bad ankle. And that's why they give it to Eric Metcalf. He's the big play guy, and Texas is, is on their way to the goal line here. This game's getting close. And in the finale, it's the seniors. Hager on defense, Metcalf that time, taking over. Quick release, intercepted. And that will be Mickey Washington. His momentum carried him into the end zone, but the officials will spot it at the one. Leon Cole and Aaron Wallace pressuring the quarterback. Murdoch had to unload it. Well, not only that, he'd been throwing it short. He had pressure, and he threw this one long. Now, post pattern should never be thrown long like that and behind the receiver. Should be thrown in front of the receiver, so especially a 5-7, He's the only one who could get it. Let's take a look at the spot. There's the possession. That's a judgment call. I'd have to say that's a touchback. It should come out to the 20, but the officials saw it differently. I agree. His momentum carried him in. That's the key. He tried to stop it up here, but number one with the pickoff, Mickey Washington with his third of the year. That's Gary Oliver in motion. They'll give it to Robert Wilson, the fullback. Britt Hager, number 60 there to say hello and happy Thanksgiving. 3.45 left. David McWilliams yep. Longhorns still in this ball game. They can use some big defense here because good defense could turn into field position against Jackie Sherrill's Aggies. Bobby, let's watch where Britt Hager lines up just before the snap of the ball here. He's getting way up in the line. If they break one off tackle, he's not going to be there. He's getting very close. steamrolling Stanley Richmond. 
Stanley might get credit for the tackle, but he's the one that got knocked down. Well, it's the alignment. There's no time to react for your linebacker. Your middle linebacker needs to get in front of this thing. He's just coming. See, straight ahead against Hager, it's very tough for Hager. See, he's not sliding. He was just stuffing. It's almost like goal line defense. Watch from behind. Hager immediately into the line, and Wilson with a little bit of a seam, and that leaves the defensive back in a very unfortunate position on his back. First down, a and at the 12. There he is. This time, it's Darren Lewis with good yardage. Out over the 20, and that'll set up second and short. Now, when you project ahead to the next two downs, Jackie Sherrill and his offensive coordinator, Joe Abizano, have some interesting things they can do. I don't think they'll throw here, Bobby. You know, I think this is bad judgment on the Texas defense. They should be, when they're on the one-yard line, I think they should be giving up two yards, three yards, not trying to drop for a loss, and that's what they're doing by getting so close in there. Lewis has the first down. He had to get to the 23. Red Hager and Mark Berry, middle linebacker, right corner, respectively. You know, there's some U.S. Marines tonight out in Hawaii watching this game, Kevin. Three of them are from College Station with a battalion group called the 81s. They're at Kaneohe Bay, Hawaii, watching the game on ESPN tonight and having a hard time containing themselves as cadets. Straight ahead, Darren Lewis out over the 30. The biggest advantage that A&M has in this game is the physical one. The right side of the line, Fontenot and McCall. Delayed handoff, and then of course Lewis. Now Lewis and Metcalf were a push, but the right side of the offensive line versus the left side of the Texas defense is definitely in favor of A&M. Lewis has it again, out near the 35. Britt Hager in on most every tackle for this team throughout the season. And this guy must absolutely ache on Sunday mornings. And this week, of course, it'll be Friday morning. And loving it. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't ache, he'd probably be unhappy. Aaron Lewis' biggest game of the year, 40 carries, 201 against Houston. He's well on his way. He'll get a breather. Larry Horton, the sophomore, who backs him up. Horton is a pass receiver. Look out for a pass. Horton normally in there for receiving and the full house back. They needed to the 35 and a half. Maybe a foot short of the 36 for the first down. Robert Wilson unpiling with Hager. Brian Ross, the tight end, helping up number 60. Aggies have it, and they'll move the chains again. We're down to the final 36 seconds of what's been an exciting third quarter, one that has seen the home team get back in the game. Can they stay as Reveille 5 barks his way? Or her way. I thought he said that a girl. Aaron Lewis. That will be the final play of the third quarter. We'll go to the fourth with AM on top of Texas by a score of 28 to 14. In the second half, the rivalry is living up to its billing. We'll be back in Austin after this timeout. AM over the Longhorns, but again, the Texas scoring drive tonight have been very brief and very short. Their defense, Kevin, is really feeling the effect. And you're looking at their defense, number 60. Now, I, I don't think you can tire him out running him from sideline to sideline. He does that with no trouble. But you will tire him out banging away straight ahead. And that's what I believe AM will do. Getting a breather. Second and 10 for the Aggies at their 36. Pressure was coming from Oscar Giles. And the pass ruled incomplete. And I'll tell you, it looked for a moment like they had to hold Giles to keep him away from the quarterback. If you just tuned in, AM had 28 points at the half. 
They did not score in the third quarter, and they have not looked good offensively. They're out of their game plan, doing things they don't want to do. And it was only an AM turnover that gave Texas seven points before halftime. Interception got them seven in the third quarter. Osgood down the field to Percy Waddle. Now, where do they mark his forward motion? It appears like it's, it's going to depend on where they set the football down. He had to get inches past that hash mark, and he could be a matter of inches short, depending on the spot. I believe he has. What a nice job by Osgood on that play. Man hanging on his jersey, stepped up. Boy, Oscar Giles again all over him. That was that was as good a play as been as we've had all night by Oscar. Hey, Less than the length of the football. Are the Aggies on their side of the field, midfield, in four down territory? Well, they were on dressing Giles. Nice job by Osgood, though. You see, him, Giles probably held on the back bottom of your screen there, and then a, just a super play by Osgood. And A&M, you have to believe they're going to go for this. They are because Sean Wilson, their punter, is still standing on the far side. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Fontenot and McCall, those are the two guys. They didn't get it last time. Fumble! This will be an easy pickup for Stanley Richard. He had the first down, but no football. Texas gets the turnover. Well, this is one of these deals where you try to hold the ball over, see? He started to stick the ball out and appeared and hit somebody's helmet. You can't advance it. Robert Wilson just came out. Came out. Texas has it. A lot of time left, 14-23. Murdoch with time and out of time. Had not been sacked all night long. But there's the familiar 83, John Roper, who came in with a team leading 14. Now this is exactly where Texas does not want to be. Second and long, and they've managed to avoid this by way of not being sacked most of the night. Have to be very, very concerned with uh, Metcalf. Cash is coming in the game. I don't know why they don't throw the long pass to the Cash brothers in the middle of the field. I think that's a play that would work. Uh, Cash is going out. He's going to be the inside man on the top of the screen. They lost six. Murdoch rifles it ahead right into the hands of Kevin Wilson. He just cannot afford to drop passes like that when you're trailing. Aaron Wallace pressuring the quarterback, but this has to be a first down. It would have been a first down. Coming from outside in, they use Cash. Cash keeps going, 19. Nelson comes in and it hits him right in the hands. And that's something that really dearly has crossed Texas tonight is drop passes. Four of them tonight. Some of them costly early. That one costly by Nelson. intercepted Murdoch had to play defensive back to keep John Roper from catching the football good reaction by Roper and then an equally good one by the quarterback you're right this is this is first you have no block that what they're trying to do is slip block Roper let him come in give the pressure drop the ball over the over his head they didn't get it done but Murdoch as you said made a tremendous play Wiljadal, without a bad early kick, has kicked greatly since then. Averaging 49 per boot. Gets a good bounce here. Cut off by Rod Harris. Ooh, smacko at the 20-yard line. 44 on the kick, 4 on the return. AM with the ball and a 14-point lead. Patient of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By Gold Star, the brightest star in electronics. And by the shower massage from Teledyne. It's the original.
Austin, Texas Memorial Stadium. A crowd, a sellout crowd of 77,000 plus on Thanksgiving night. And the Aggies who've led all the way with the football. First down at their own 20. Look out here, you got coverage on the corners. Osgood pitching. Darren Lewis, huge ball game for him tonight. Can't reach the 25. Hager and company. Stanley Richard, 18 from free safety all over him. Storyline here in Central Texas. Darren Lewis, a big night. He's approaching 200 turnovers. Big in the game. AM has given up two that have led to Texas scores. And 11 of 14 times the Longhorns have had the ball. They have not even grabbed a first down. Lewis again. Juking his way up the middle. And he set up third and short as Warren Bolden at right tackle. Got it. Again, one of the things that uh, Britt Hager does not want to have to do is take on linemen like the center. Arthur's got a hold of him and pushing him away. Now, what AM did there is they set strong to the wide side, ran back to the tight end, weak to the right side, which is where they want to run. They don't necessarily have to have it as the strong side of their offense. They want to run behind those two offensive linemen. Total yards, second half. AM, no points, but 145 yards. Texas has seven points to go with those yards. And Lewis has the first down, angling left. Tex Mercer, number three, up from strong safety to get him. But Darren Lewis doesn't need a whole lot of room to make a big play on third down. And they'll move the chains. The clock will start moving. We've got a lot of time left in this one. 11.45 remaining, and Britt Hager must feel like he's playing up in the Mile High City right now or something. A little short on the old oxygen. Feels like the turkey after dinner. Darren Lewis isn't too fatigued. He keeps on toting. Not much there. Roger Fritcher left tackle. The difference between offense and defense in terms of fatigue, and here's a guy who's not even tired, is that the offense knows where they're going. And you can psychologically, you can rest offensively if it's a pass player, it's not coming to you, or uh, you can see the difference. Defensively, you never know where. You're always up on your toes, and you have to run to the ball on every play, so defensive players get fatigued more easily. I believe. Darren Lewis outside, angling up the field. Bobby Rhodes at weak side linebacker, 67, a 6'4 junior. Trying to get info on Bobby here in Austin is a little bit tough. He's not the media guy. Yeah, tough to find him on the speed charts, as they call it. He wasn't in the phone book either. I checked. Well, he must be unlisted because he had those uh, couple of tackles earlier before he came into this one, and now it's... For that situation, third and four. No, sir! There's Roger Fritcher at left tackle. They're getting some good plays out of those rather inexperienced tackles. Well, Texas, a British defensive job by Texas and the coaching. Watch the penetration. What they're going to do, they're going to mess this thing up right away. Osgood gets immediate pressure, has to make a decision. Fritcher on the back. It was Powell that caused the pressure. And Fritcher that came from behind and made the tackle. Texas has played well defensively in the second half. Eric Metcalf and Chris Samuels to receive the kick of Sean Wilson. He's booted his longest of 44, averaging 39. This one won't go very far, except with the bounce. Got a nice bounce after a wobbly half spiral. Down to the 20 of Texas. 9.30 remaining, 28-14 AM. Longhorns offense next. My father college game day. Tim Brando and Bino Cook preview the day in college football. They'll focus in on Notre Dame and USC. At 7.30 Eastern, the Battle of Florida. The Gators take on the fifth-ranked Seminoles of Florida State. Roger Twibel and Lee Corso will call that one for you. At the 20, Longhorns, first down. Left side, they try to get Metcalf out there against some folks. And Eric has a couple of yards before skating out of bounds. Aaron Wallace.
Wallace and Mickey Washington. Right outside backer, right corner, up to pressure, number two. Go back a ways to think about that block field goal, and what that meant this game. Texas down there attempting to get three points. AM blocked the thing. Make no mistake about it, Texas AM very well coached, as is Texas. They blocked that field goal and ran it in for a touchdown, and that is the buffer in this game, a 14 point lead. At the home of the Horns, Memorial Stadium, Austin, 9.25 left in the game. AM 28, Texas 14. Murdoch, long left side, and Tony Jones, he is gone. With that catch, Tony Jones has set a new Texas record for yards in a season. He passed the 724 of Ben Proctor in 1949. 112 on the night. He's up over 800. The good is 28-21. Bomb time with 9.15 remaining. Well, kudos to the offensive line. Time to get off a big pass. And Jones, he's not in there because he's 5'7", 140, because he's big. He's in there because he can run. And Murdoch over Mickey Washington, a perfect pass. That was team offense. Murdoch, the offensive line, and Tony Jones speed guts, and they put seven on the board. Crowds in the game now. With losses each of the last two weeks, or rather, losses in their last two home games. Really, three if you consider Dallas a home game when they play Oklahoma. They call it a neutral field. But they've lost here to Arkansas and to Houston. These folks haven't had much to cheer about at home in a couple of months. Ahead of this show, we talk about Brian and tradition. That's all that's at stake here. All that's at stake is 21 straight points. This team fell 28 to nothing in the second quarter, and it's now 28 to 21. Well, and they're not doing it on ability. They're doing it on guts and determination because they him physically across the board is a better team. Tony Jones was in a bit of a short slump, but came to an end on that seven smothered before he can reach the 20. The momentum is colored burnt orange right now. Well, Bobby, before they were playing against 11, they're now playing against 77,011. Aggie supporters ring the north end zone to our left. But they don't have a whole lot of noise right now. You have to be real careful about it. Defensively, what you're thinking about is be careful you don't get pumped and over pursue. And AM has used the trap very well tonight. You're going to be so pumped up, you'll be chasing the ball carrier in the misdirection of Kenya. Osgood, play action. Time to throw. Intercepted by Tex Mercer. Mercer, a backup and strong safety to Paul Pierman, his second interception of the year. We've got a quarterback in this game that has never played in this game before, Chris Osgood. He's never been to Austin for this one when it was competitive, and he didn't see Mercer. He was trying to hit Waddle across the middle. Mercer sitting back there, and Texas has field position. Amazingly, this game is 29 yards away from being tied. It was once 28 to nothing. There will be no tie in this game. Metcalf. Ah, John Roper got him. 
Eric turned what might have been a yard or two loss into three or four on the positive side. Well, the only way there will be a tie in this game is if they score right away and kick the extra point. Yeah, right. if, it, if it comes down to a late situation, nobody will be going for the tie here. You know, I would have to be thinking with Texas inability on offense for most of this game, if they're going to get another opportunity tonight, that's a very tough call for David McWilliams. I think it depends on how soon they score, if they score. Murdoch, little out to Tony Jones. AM bench calling it incomplete. Jones gets a reception from the officials. Well, hit the ground, I think it was short arm. Even Burdock. Burdock thought it was uh, it hit the ground. His reaction was one of an incompletion. Well, Jackie Sherrill will shy away from the officials after an earlier 15 yarder for powering at them earlier this evening. Burdock throws it. Hard to tell from that angle. That must have been a one. Jones, you see, Jones doesn't look like, uh, look too happy about it. He had the official block, didn't he? If that was a catch, it was a one-handed catch against his right thigh because there were not two hands on the ball. Pressure, Murdoch unloads, and it's incomplete, a battle for the ball. Carry Cash against Derek Ritchie. And that's a, a tremendous no call by the official. There was no penalty that looked awful, but it was no penalty there. If anything, Cash, number 19, goes into the defender, Richie. Richie's got perfect position, keeping him from the ball. If anything, that's offensive interference. The T is going down at the 28 and a half yard line. Now remember, the last one was blocked, and it was blocked by Wallace. Wayne Clemens is four for four from that distance. But the call a 29 yarder, or a 29 yarder. And it looks like he got it. Just inside the right upright. And with 7.32 remaining, it's now 24 unanswered Texas points. It's a four-point game as the hot rivalry continues. What's the hottest gift for men this year? The minute I saw it, it was like, this is perfect for Steve. My brother's going to freak when he sees I got it for him. <laughs> it's a hilarious video cassette. The very best of the football follies. 44 minutes of some of the all-time craziest football bloopers ever. He can watch that kind of stuff over and over again. The bloopers, the fumbles, he really likes it. And best of all, you get it free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Call their toll-free Christmas hotline now and get 55 issues of SI at a low Christmas sale price, over 55% off the cover price. Not bad. Not bad at all. Your gift includes exclusive previews and exciting issues, like the 25th anniversary swimsuit issue. I'd love to get SI this Christmas, and I hope my girlfriend Kelly is watching. It's the perfect gift for any man. There's even a card for under the tree, all for just 99 cents per issue. You won't be billed till next year, and get the videotape free. Call 1-800-541-8400. You won't see this, Willie. Oh, no. Well, honey, Merry Christmas. I figured my dad, Gary Bettenhausen, the Indy driver, ought to see what kind of drive the new generation's got. Hey, what are you doing here today, Mr. Bettenhausen? So I let him take my new old Cutlass Supreme for a spin. Right away, he took to the smooth handling. And the fuel-injected V6, he sure liked what it could do. This is not your father's old feel. This is the new generation of old. Well, where have you guys been? We ran into a little traffic, honey. 7.32 remaining at Red Hot Memorial Stadium in Austin. This giant Texas crowd has come alive. The Longhorns have scored 24 unanswered points. Some helped by the Texas uh, A&M turnovers. A long pass to Tony Jones and now a field goal. In fact, a mistake on special teams is a difference in this game. The kickoff by Wayne Clemens. Rod Harris coming near side and he gets cracking out to the 27 maybe the 28 yard line and that difference Kevin came early in the second quarter that's why they call them special teams Aaron Wallace number 23 inside excuse me yeah Wallace 23 inside makes the block and John Roper the other blitz brother takes off down the field now this is the difference in the game it was not an offensive play but this blocked field goal, they played pretty much evenly offensively. 
Lance Pavlis, a 6'2", 185 sophomore out of Tom Ball, Texas. The number one rated Texas quarterback out of high school is the signal caller now. And right up the middle goes Darren Lewis. Tex Mercer, Stanley Richard in on the stop. Right over Fontenot and McCall. Now, Pavlis, 7 for 19 on the year. This guy was Mr. Football in Texas high school football a few years ago. He has not played a great deal. They say he just wasn't making things happen. No, he needs to make something happen here. Came in with a lot of clippings from his high school career. He was 5 for 7 for 77 yards against Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl last year and engineered an 80-yard scoring drive. Roger Fritcher, left tackle, in on the stop there as workhorse Darren Lewis gets closer and closer to a record-setting night. Is high on the year, 40 carries for 201 yards against Houston. He now has surpassed that with 212 on 35 totes with a touchdown. is again. Oh, look at that play by Oscar Giles. 95, took on a blocker, and just pushed him into the ball carrier. Got some good young players on this team. The big O, Oscar Giles. Number 95, left side of your screen, just riding it out there. Everybody riding their blocks defensively. There's nowhere to go but down. And Britt Hager, smelling the kill, came diving in. Here's where we find out about Lance Pappas. Third down and long. We'll call it 11. That's Rod Harris in motion. Deep, deep drop. Sack time! That's James Patton, a freshman. is out of League City, Texas, a true freshman. He backs up both defensive tackles and backed up the Yankees 10 yards that time. Samuels and Metcalf to receive the kick of Sean Wilson. It'll be good field position, barring a mistake by the Longhorns. A low kick. That is Samuels out of bounds between the 45 of Texas and midfield, and the Horns go back to work again. Remember, David McWilliams was a defensive coach before he was a head coach. Here comes Patton on a twist. The left side of your screen. Fabulous never had a chance. Chalk that one up to just great defense. Freshman, and there's a bunch of them. They've got 40 people redshirted over the last two years in Texas, and they're waiting in the wings. Well, five and six wouldn't be pretty, but it would be a lot easier to take for Longhorn fans with a come-from-behind win here tonight. David McWilliams Longhorns, for the first time in this game, are in a position to take the lead with a score. It took them about 55 minutes to get into such position. At the first down marker, it is a catch for Tony Jones. Tony Jones and Mark Murdoch keep making big plays when needed. Offensive line of this team. Patched up unit, injured Thomas Plain with a bad shoulder. And this fella is the youngster. What a job they've done against what I feel was at the beginning of the season one of the best defenses in the country. Texas starts three sophomores up front. Charles Cephas at left tackle, Dwayne Miller left guard, and Stan Thomas at right tackle. the Aggies all over that one. Look at the numbers in there. 23, 24, 48. Wallace, Bob, and Batiste. Anything that takes time against AM is not going to work. They're just coming. Front three, a lot of penetration. Guards are pulling, never get anywhere. And it was a little bit of a hesitation in the handoff. That's the way the play was designed, but too many AM people in the backfield. It's got to be quick. A quick out on second and 12. Tony Jones, the receiver, 
Derek Ritchie with a good open field tackle to avoid another Texas first down. Yeah, you know, Tony Jones, 5'7", 140. When uh, David McWilliams was at Texas Tech, he had a punt returner that was 130 Thurman. Tyrone Jones. Ty Thurman. No, Tyrone Thurman. Tyrone Thurman. There you go. He was a Smurf, they called him. Unbelievable. What a player he was. And uh, Tony Jones reminds me a little bit of him. Yeah, he would fit right in with that group. He could fit anywhere. <laughs> Shoebox. Third and two. Couple of tight ends, Curtis Swift and Stephen Clark in there. Call it three of them. And now Murdoch will call timeout and talk it over with his coaches. 3.20, Texas driving for what could be a game-leading score. After win number 500 here tonight, 26 schools have done it. Michigan is number one with 692. The next in line behind Jackie Sherrill's Aggies are California with 496 and Missouri with 492. After our ball game tonight, Charlie Steiner and Bill Patrick are standing by with a full edition of Sports Center. They'll update all the NFL and college football. Maybe even a high school game or two, as we had some of that earlier today here on ESPN. Hey, think about Jackie Sherrill and the, and the problems he's had over the past 10 days. What must be going through his mind right now? He said, what a week I'm having. If I lose this ball. Oh. He's had a rough time. We talked to him yesterday. He did not look good. I'll tell you, I've met with him many times. He did not look good. He looked tired. He looked like he had had enough. Uh, he doesn't need to lose this game. AM 0 for 5 on third and long since halftime. And that will be short. Robert Wilson on a quick opener to the fullback. Needed to get to the 40 and a half of Texas. Red Hager in on the stop. It'll be fourth. And the Aggies are a good two yards short. Well, they go ahead and run another play here. They'll let the time run out. It's, it's been uh, it's been AM's inability to get these that's kept this game close. Yeah, with Texas having one timeout remaining, a first down, and a couple of running plays, and this baby is history, and they've won five in a row. We'll see if they can do something now. They call timeout. They call a timeout. Why would they not just take the penalty? 143 remaining. Fourth and three coming up. Well, ESPN has an interesting football Sunday on tap with NFL game day, etc. That starts at 11.30 a.m. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Pete Axdom, and John Saunders preview the day in the National Football League. At 7 p.m. Eastern, they're back to recap the day on NFL primetime. If you love highlights, you've got to see that show. And at 8 o'clock, our coverage of the NFL continues when the New York Giants head for New Orleans to take on the Saints. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann call it for you Sunday night near Bourbon Street. And if you like loose teeth, you'll love that one. <laughs> well, that's, that could be, uh, that's a playoff uh, preview there, those two. Aggies will play field position here. Why this is time call, for Sean Wilson to pooch one. Why did they call timeout? I'm surprised at that. So I figured they wouldn't need it on defense. Maybe they didn't want to give up the five yards. But I don't know about that. 39 yards a kick is Wilson averaging on five punts tonight. He hangs it up. And a wobbles down the middle and Metcalf fair catches at the 10. You would think he'd be punting for the sideline. But he boat booted it right down the middle. And it's very simple for the Longhorns. A minute 37 left, 89 yards to go. A field goal does no good. They've got to go the 89. T Tony Jones and Eric Metcalf are the only two players on this team, and we've seen it tonight, that can go that far in a short time. You can expect A&M's defense to cover them. Anyone else, they can keep in front of them, and they will not get them to give up the big play. Murdoch. Right in between a couple of defenders, Tony Jones, the antenna receiver, and a sandwich between number one, Mickey Washington, and Gary Jones, number six. It looked like Washington had a legitimate shot at the football. There's no way he should throw that intermediate route. He's going to draw double coverage. The only advantage that Jones would have at this point is a crossing pass because he could use his speed. He got it in there and give him that, but you can see the double coverage with Gary Jones. 
What you want to do with, with the little guy, Tony Jones, you see, that's virtually an impossible pass. That you've got to get him out deep across the middle and let him run away from the defense. Boy, Tony Jones took a hard hit from Gary Jones on that play, and he is down. Johnny Walker, number one, is the flanker for Texas on the right side. He's a sophomore from San Antonio. He's caught nine balls on the year coming in. He's a number we simply have not called tonight. The entire Texas passing game has been to the other side for Tony Jones, who's really come alive with Murdoch quarterbacking because Murdoch has gotten him the ball better this year than Shannon Kelly did earlier. It's also taken some of the pressure off Eric Metcalf, but number one is one you might think about now. He's out to the right side with Stephen Clark, the tight end. High school All-American he is. Up into the pocket and a sack. Jeroy Robinson got in. That is sack number four for the Aggie defense tonight. 46 on the year. Horns have to line up quickly on third and long. They have one timeout remaining. Murdoch has a man. That is Keith Cash, the twin brother of Kerry. And that is a first down. Crossing pattern, very difficult to double cover on a crossing pattern. Now this is the thing they should be running to Jones, but he's out of the game. What happens on a crossing pattern is if you can outrun the guy, generally you can beat him. The quarterback has got to be careful not to throw it to a dropping linebacker or a safety. Perfect pattern for a 16-yard gain. Left side, there's the tight end. Steven at the 33 of Texas with 57 seconds remaining. Kevin Smith, who normally plays as a nickelback, a redshirt freshman in strong safety, bumping the receiver out. You're looking at a future star here in Texas. This kid has played a whale of a game. Now, this is as much Texas A&M's game plan as it is Texas. They'll give up some of these crossing patterns if they can catch him in the middle of the field and keep the clock moving. But remember, if Texas can get it down in scoring territory, they've got those tall receivers. That was a nice... Second down, Murdoch trying to throw it left-handed. Looked like he had Eric Metcalf ahead of him. The Blitz brothers, Roper and Wallace all over him. And it looked like Murdoch tried to go with Southpaw to throw it upfield. This play stretches the limits of even my imagination, how they could not call this grounding. <laughs> well, I guess... <laughs> it doesn't say you have to throw with your natural arm. I, uh, I have to laugh. I have to laugh at that play. You're looking at some tired defensive players. This has been a whale of a game. Both teams have played extremely well. They're down and one. Uh-oh. Another sack. And there's that Alex Morris from left corner. It'll be fourth and long with 44 seconds remaining. Blown assignment by Dean Cockrell, the young running back. Number 33 on the right side. He just... He just did not know. They set the defensive back, and he did not know what he should do. They didn't block anybody. No round rock, Texas. is probably a lot like some of those small towns we passed driving from College Station over to Austin two days ago. But they produce a great quarterback. Watch 33, Dean Cockrell. Left side of your screen. He didn't even see it. See him sitting up there in the very shallow. He has to get deep. He needs to check that man. He checked inside. He needs to check outside. He never did it. Young player, he's coming out of the game. You see, a young player can't fault him. It's just a lot of pressure and a very smart call by AM. Texas has used its final timeout. Now it's time to work the sidelines for big yardage. 44 seconds remaining. They're only at their own 27. Long way to go on the short end of a 28-24 score. on fourth and seven Aaron Wallace one of the Whip brothers does his thing to Mark Murdoch so the AM defense late nails it down
You can teach anything, but you can't teach speed. Charles Seif is 6'5", 270. Number 78 had no chance against Aaron Wallace. He simply ran around him and made the blitz. That's just, that's what A&M is. Aggie Wallace version Wilkins. of a bear hug is Wallace wrapped up Mark Murdoch. So, big defense by the Aggies here in the last minute. Darren Lewis of AM is our Casio player of the game. A personal high of 211 on the night. Average five and a half per carry for 38 times with a touchdown. What a sophomore he is. Aggies will waste some time and fall on it. Texas is out of timeouts. Maybe one more play, and this one is history. And now they're getting into it. Looks like Tex Mercer is being escorted out of the game by the officials and defensive coordinator Paul Jett. Darren Lewis also in on the scrap. Well, AM Kevin had just enough tonight. Jackie Sherrill's team played great early, lost its quarterback, and managed to hold on. They've got great talent on this football team. We have to give AM some credit, and that man some credit. He's had a bad week, as we said. A lot of distractions. They came in here at all, built a big lead, and hung on, did what they had to when it came down to game time. But you really can't imagine the intensity of this rivalry unless you're here. And of course, the Texas seniors will leave without having beaten Oklahoma or a &M. Now the clock runs out, and AM wins it. 28 to 24. The Aggies will continue their season against Alabama next week on ESPN. 7-4, 6-1 in the Southwest Conference. Second best to Arkansas, the Cotton Bowl team. Texas will finish with its second losing season in the last three years. Would have anyway. Now with a record of 4-7. So a proud night for football in the Lone Star State. They tried to hook them tonight. Britt Hager and the offense came up a little bit short. Hager had 20 tackles in the game tonight. And 28, Texas 24, as we wrap things up from Austin. Now you've got the red shoes for the walking moment. The new walking shoe. Now you've got the red shoes Made for just the for you. Easy spirit. It's easy when you got the right shoe. Easy walking. It's easy when you got the right shoe. Easy weight loss. Easy spirit. Now you can walk for miles and your feet won't feel a thing. Easy spirit. Call now. You know, Thrifty Car Rent was thrifty price for everyone. Wow, Henry, this is a good deal, Simon. It's enough for you can't refuse. Did your guys line up after the big lead? No, I don't think so. You look at the, the fumble that's turned in, the interception, and throw the inter another interception, and then, of course, they make the big play with uh, Jones. And we didn't let down. We just wasn't as productive because we had Bucky in there, and Bucky was being able to run the option, and we took the option game out of us. And, so it was... A game that uh, is supposed to be played like to, between Texas and A&M. The defense got burned on some big plays, but they came up and made big defensive plays when they needed to in the fourth quarter. Well, I think our I think our players have done that all year, you know, and you got to give them credit. But this is something that's never been done at A&M, beating Texas five years in a row. Think about Darren Lewis. He was a big part of your game plan. Had a great night. Well, if we could got it got it out and pitched the ball to him and got him in some cracks, he made a rush for 250 yards. Okay, Alabama, you're next best in the Hurricane Bowl. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about celebrating this one. You're going to be worried about getting out of this crowd, Coach. Thanks very much. Back up to Bob and Kevin. All right, Chris, thank you very much. And coming up in a moment, we'll wrap things up from Austin as the Aggies beat the Longhorns 28-24. Be sure to be with ESPN this Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern for College Game Day. Then at 7.30, the Battle of the Sun. Darren Lewis of AM set a new career high. He scored a touchdown and ran 38 times for 211 yards. 
Meanwhile, senior linebacker Britt Hager of the Longhorns had another night at the office with 20 tackles leading the Texas defense. And it was Jackie Sherrill and David McWilliams with their clubs hooking up in a tight battle here tonight that lived up to our advanced billing as the battle of the state of Texas here this evening. For Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler, I'm Bob Carpenter wishing you a happy Thanksgiving from Austin, Texas, where the Aggies were victorious tonight. And coming up next on ESPN, Sports Center with Bill Patrick and Charlie Steiner. The pressure's really on as of November 14th. That's when Murphy Brown makes its television debut opposite ABC's Monday Night Football and the NBC Monday Night Movie, Lisa. Interesting to watch. And the pressure's also on to make 1969 into a big box office hit. We'll have that when we return. Really? But the car is so natural looking. That's why I use Miss Clairol. When hairdressers want to make women beautiful, they reach for the colors of Miss Clairol more often than any other. Could you make me look long like that? Superb color, time after time. Maybe that's why so many hairdressers trust the colors of Miss Clairol. Mommy, it's beautiful. So, for beautiful hair, gorgeous color, shouldn't you trust Miss Clairol? Yuck. Too weird. Well, maybe I shouldn't call. She's all you've talked about since we moved. What a wimp. There goes nothing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, who's With AT&T, your long-distance calls go through twice as fast, and for that... Hello? We apologize. Susan? Roger? Yeah, this is Roger. <laughs> this is a Tyson chicken. Generations of fine breeding have made this chicken one of the most succulent available. In this form, however, it makes a very awkward order. These are Tyson breast tenders, whole strips of juicy breast meat cut from the same delicious Tyson chicken. Choosing a Tyson chicken or Tyson breast tenders depends on whether you prefer your guests sit or dance. Tyson breast tenders, it's Tyson chicken, only smaller. It was the final year of a turbulent decade, 1969, a pivotal time in the maturation of a nation and a generation of young people. Now it's a movie bent on recapturing the naive idealism and bitter realities facing a family and a country. Why are we in Vietnam? How many of sweet faced mother's sons are dying to find out? What are you going to do? Take the building! 1969 stars Kiefer Sutherland and Robert Downey Jr. as Scott Denny and Ralph Carr, two teenagers during the height of the Vietnam War who are about to enter college and learn what friendship and freedom mean in America. Man, that was fun. Uh, I don't think it deals with the Vietnam War in the same regard that Full Metal Jacket or Platoon did, and if anything, I think it adds a balance to that genre of film. It's really about relationships of the characters with Ralph and Scott, and, and Scott's family is, is a, it's, it's a great balance of characters. You must be really proud of your brother, huh? Hey, you want to come with me? Shoot a few Kong? No, it's not my war. I don't care about it. Is that so? 
1969 also stars Bruce Dern as Sutherland's hawkish, conservative father, whose older son, Alden, played by Christopher Wynn, is about to depart for the war. I apologize to your brother. I'm sorry. It's not my war. It doesn't matter, Dad. Everyone's entitled to his own opinion. Not that kind of opinion. I'm here because it says something. It makes an attempt, and in a very entertaining and very commercial way, but it really digs deeper than anything I've been in since coming home, certainly. <laughs> Shall I have this? This is stuff. That was in the refrigerator last night. The film also marks the return to the big screen of Marriott Hartley as Jessie, the mother who's trying to hold her family together before the war tears it apart. I can't do it. Talk to me about it. I adore her. Uh, she's torn between two worlds. Her son, one of her 